I'm Mo. And my name is Aiko. And we are so excited to bring you your lesson for today. But first, let's stand up and worship God. Let's, let's go! go! has fallen when fear is coming still you're calling me when faith is lost and my hope exhausted you will be my strength when my mind says I'm What's the first thing the teacher does? She lays out the rules for the class. Teachers spend most of the first day introducing themselves and laying out their expectations. Teachers tell you what the rules are for homework and classroom. They lay the ground rules for behavior in the classroom. And they let you know what the consequences will be for breaking those rules. Teachers aren't the only people with rules and expectations. When you sign up with a sports team, the first thing the coach goes over are the rules. There are rules of the game to be followed, but coaches also have their own rules for practice. There are rules for being on time to games, rules for keeping your uniforms tidy, and rules for taking care of your equipment. Board games have rules. Video games also have rules. Playgrounds have rules. And parents have rules too. Parents probably have the most rules of anybody, and they're constantly making new ones. Make your bed in the morning to no slide on the couch. Rules may seem restrictive, but rules are created for a reason. 
The rules of the house are to teach you how to take care of your things and help with your chores, as well as how to respect other people. No hitting, no slime on the couch, clean your own shoes, put your toys away. All rules have these purpose and a reason. Classroom rules have a purpose too. They keep order in the class so everyone can learn. Board games, video games, and sport rules help us play fair. We may not always like rules, but rules would not be made if there wasn't a good reason. Today, we're starting a series where we will look at a set of rules that God gave His people Israel. After setting them free from slavery, God gave the Israelites 10 simple rules that taught them the differences between right and wrong. These rules are called the Ten Commandments, and they're the foundation for living a good life. Check this out! Stories of the Bible Moses in the Wilderness this is Moses, hey. who was an Israelite born in Egypt in a time when Israelite boys were not supposed to live. Wait, huh? Moses, however, grew up in the palace of the Pharaoh, the very man who was enslaving the Israelite people. When Moses grew up, he made a big mistake uh -oh. and fled Egypt uh -oh. to live with the Midianites. But God called Moses back to Egypt ah. to deliver his people with the help of his brother Aaron. Ooh. After God showed his miraculous power in Egypt, he led the Israelites through the Red Sea and towards the Promised Land. They followed God who showed himself as a cloud by day and fire by night. As God led them through the wilderness, the Israelites became thirsty and hungry. Uh. They complained to Moses and Aaron uh. and said, if only we had died in Egypt. Uh. God said to Moses that he would provide for his people. Hey. Each morning they awoke and found manna for the day. Uh. What's that? and each night God gave them meat. <laughs> the people were still thirsty, and they were mad at Moses, saying, Did you bring us out here to die of thirst? Yeah. So Moses cried out to God, and God told Moses to strike a rock, and water came flowing out of it for the people to drink. And so the Lord provided for his people's needs. After traveling in the desert for three months, they came to Mount Sinai, and God called Moses from the top of the mountain. God spoke to Moses there of the future of his people and reminded him of the miracles of the past. After three days, there was thunder and lightning as a thick cloud covered the mountain. The people heard a loud trumpet blast. And Moses led people to the foot of the mountain to meet with God. God told them how his people were to live and how they were to honor him and respect each other. The Israelites had seen for themselves that God had spoken to Moses from heaven. These rules that God told them are called the Ten Commandments. And the Israelites feared God, for his mighty power had brought them out of slavery and provided for them in the desert. God wanted to set his people on the right path. Never before had he given specific directions on how to live a good life. But here, for the first time, we see God giving his Ten Commandments that will help them know the difference between right and wrong. God gave us these commands to teach us how to make wise choices, but there's a bigger reason for these rules. They teach us how to love God and how to love people. When we learn the Ten Commandments, not only we will learn how to make good choices, but we'll learn how we can spread God's love to the whole world. God set these rules in stone to teach us how we should love him and how we should respect other people. The first five commandments all have to do with loving God. We need to keep Him first, honor His name, and respect our day of worship. And the last six commands all have to do with loving others. First, our parents, and then everyone else. When we follow the Ten Commandments, we will show respect to other people and their things. 
We will honor God with our words and actions. We will honor our parents. And yes, we will keep ourselves out of that trouble. More importantly, following the Ten Commandments shows we love God and we love other people. Every game has rules. Every home has rules. Every classroom has rules. The Ten Commandments are rules for life. They teach us right and wrong. They guide us in making choices. And they show us how to love God and our neighbor. Let's commit to learning the Ten Commandments so that we can play fair, do the right thing, and share God's love with everyone. Bye.